Welcome back to another episode of The Lauren Epstein Show. I'm your host, Lauren Epstein, here on 96.7 FM, Arlington, Virginia. And today we have unbelievably extraordinary guests talking about a very timely and interesting topic. And they're both, the guests are looking at each other nodding like, really? Oh, are yeah, we? exactly. I so, feel uh, rather extraordinary. Yeah, now, now I'm today, excited. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. I pumped him up. Now we got to deliver. <laughs> exactly. So, Today, we are going to talk about, for those who have never heard of this company, there's a small company out of Seattle, Washington called Amazon, and they are going to open up another headquarters somewhere in the United States. Or North maybe America. Not, North America. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're going to potentially pick Arlington, Virginia to, to land this headquarters. And this is a really hot topic, I think, nationally, and so we're going to talk about it. And with me, I have my experts, Christian Dorsey who's a good friend of the show and a returning uh, show guest, and also a board member of Arlington County. He was elected to the board in 2015 and is serving uh, currently as the vice chair. Christian represents our county on the board of the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority and is vice chair of the Finance and Budget Committee. Also, outside of public service, Christian's a policy and communications consultant supporting organizations in realizing their missions. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you, Lauren. Good to be here. And, and also with me is, uh, I've known Jonathan a long time, Jonathan Aberman, who's a highly respected thought leader on entrepreneurship and innovation. He is a venture investor, uh, innovation consultant, university professor, and media commentator. All of these roles keeps him connected to the business community and innovation. Jonathan was recognized by Washingtonian Magazine as a tech titan and by the Washington Business Journal as a member of the Power 100, to name a few of the honors he holds. And Jonathan has his fingers on the pulse of the technology community here in the D.C. area. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Great to be here, man. And uh, for those of you who don't know, both Christian and Jonathan were on (laughs) Kojo Namdi's radio show, like, was it a couple months ago? Yeah, Yeah. but you know what? This is a much nicer. (laughs) The vibe here is tremendous. Don't you feel that? I I think so. And I think on the day that we were on, Jonathan, Kojo was actually sick. He heard heard you and I were going to be in the same place. That's right. That's right. He's like, I can't do that. I cannot be with these two. It's too frightening. So I've been hearing about you know this coming to this uh, Amazon coming to DC and and people having all sorts of different opinions. Uh, they're against it because X, Y, and Z, or they're for it because of X, Y, and Z. And I wanted to hear from you guys just to kind of I think the the fairest conversation would be to look at all the consequences and the unintended, un- unintended consequences of Amazon coming, and then we can kind of say well. What do we want? What do we think might be the best thing? Jonathan, why don't you kick us off? What are your thoughts about Amazon? No pressure there, huh? No. All <laughs> okay. right. Well, Christian, we can go to Christian. No, it's, it's, it's all good. The... No, we, we, he and I play off each other a lot, I, I expect. Look, the way I look at the the region, we have a real problem uh, generally, which is we're not creating enough high value added jobs. And although that may not be obvious to people, that when you look at the job growth in our region for high value added jobs, we lag Every other significant metropolitan area. I mean, what is a high value? Well, what? just a knowledge worker job. So knowledge worker, software, healthcare, uh, anything that's above hourly wage. You know, something where there are benefits, where somebody can make eighty, nine, one hundred, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, unfortunately, we're lagging the rest of the country right now. It's it's a hidden fact, perhaps, and it's quite stunning. It's particularly, it's particularly bad in high technology. We have a net outflow right now. Um, even though we train more technology workers than any place in the country, we actually have a net outflow right now to places like Silicon Valley and um, uh, Boston and others. But interestingly enough, we also have an outflow of millennials to places like Norfolk. It's a very interesting, perfect storm right now. Housing prices are high. Uh, there are various things going on. So the net net is that we have a real interesting problem, which is I think the federal government is not going to be as much of a provider of high value added jobs as it has been in the past. It's going to shrink. It's certainly going to shrink for the next couple of years. And with the debt overhang, it may shrink permanently. I think a lot of us are really worried that this town could be sort of like Detroit without the charm in five or ten years. <laughs> Seriously, uh, you know, Detroit, Detroit grew in the back of the auto industry. And when the auto industry changed, there really wasn't a lot there. And now it's trying to reinvigorate itself. And in some ways, um, we're facing a similar situation. So I think for me to go to the punchline, and we'll talk about this more, Amazon is a double-edged sword, but 50,000 jobs that are high value add, that have benefits, that have opportunities, will keep millennials here and will keep the high tech people that are currently going to Silicon Valley and elsewhere. And so I'm in favor of it, although I'm not in favor of 
a lot of the displacement and other things is going to cause, and we've got to be mindful of that. But I guess overall, I think that it would be a very good thing for our economy to have them here. So I, I was just um, at a recruiting event the other day, and I know the company I work for, Bowhead, I'm, I'm the head of talent acquisition. I've got 400 open positions. A bunch of them are here in D.C. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a guy from, uh, from, from Booz, and he said he has 4,000 open positions, a bunch here in D.C. Mm-hmm. And I see tons of positions here in D.C. that are getting filled, but you're saying that well, so the Greater Washington Partnership and McKinsey and I um, worked together for a number of months and looked at the talent uh, issues here. And what's fascinating and troubling is that we over-index graduates from two-year you know, two year programs, a lot of community college graduates and a lot of – What do you mean over-index? We produce a boatload of them and – and we should ship them out. No, <laughs> they don't get jobs right. because a lot of the employers won't hire unless you have a BA. You know, Booz is a great example because national security requirements, even if they don't have a national security customer, they won't hire somebody out of a Northern Virginia Community College or a certificate program to do a job. So you have that. The other problem you have is we have far too many people involved in consultative businesses here and service model delivery of technology and the product part of the community, the part that you're in uh, and I'm in, is very invisible to a lot of them. So when people think I want to do something entrepreneurial around a software or technology product, they leave. They just don't think of staying here. So it creates this this impression that there are not technology product entrepreneurs here. and But by the same token, a lot of the employers, I think, are their own worst enemies because they won't hire non-traditional people. And this is a problem for people of color and, and women in the workforce and so forth. And Honestly, that's why we have an overhang of jobs at the same time we're overproducing people. Now, with those dire analysis. (laughs) He started with me. Cheer me up. I need a hug. But but I think that's part of the reason why, you know, you can look at a scenario and look, you know, a lot of people are concerned about Amazon for issues of displacement, for issues of, um, you know, communities actually giving away more in, in broadly shared, um, you know, taxpayer resources to lure this one company. Those are real concerns to be addressed, but certainly the opportunity, you can see it on paper, how uh, an Amazon choosing to locate here would be a, a huge benefit, not just for the local community, but for the region uh, writ large, because it would begin, or not even begin, it would cement that there is a diversification afoot away from the federal government, which is something that Arlington has pursued vigorously over the last 15 years and has accelerated recently. And, you know, with Amazon uh, in in our area where we do have a lot of commercial vacancy, we do have space with the development of Potomac Yards, we can mitigate a lot of that displacement. And what that can do then is, you know, it's not just the presence of Amazon coming to town, it's the associated other businesses that would begin to look at this region quite differently than they ever have, um, that I think could really be a, a long-term shift that would be to our benefit, not just in Arlington and Alexandria, but, uh, you know, certainly going through the region into the district and, 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 and uh, Maryland as well. So it has to be done right, but, you know, people should not, uh, I think, dismiss what a huge potential opportunity this is if, in fact, Amazon decides to, uh, to come to this area. So do you think that what, what Jonathan was saying about the kind of it's not good for businesses because of our, the, the nature of what we're generating uh, for, for people, do you agree? Do you think that, that we we're, could become like a Detroit? <laughs> well, you know, look, if... Not if, the same thing wrong with Detroit. I well, this one Detroit, Detroit is, is rebounding nicely. It is, <laughs> and it's rebounding by building indigenous industries That's and right. attracting millennials. There are a lot of reasons why. Yeah. It's a really great urban renewal story, actually. Right, but I think we're, I think of us as very diversified as a, as a region. Like, we have a lot of different businesses. I mean, this is... Uh, like, uh, there's a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of... What do they call it? Not hotels, but hotel-type... You know, all the big hotel companies are here. Mm-hmm. A lot of healthcare so, companies are here. Yeah, we do There's have diversification, lobby. but still, the federal government is so and so incredibly omnipresent and so significant in terms of, um, you know, thirty-seven uh, percent, I believe that's the number of metro riders are are federal government employees, yeah. for example. So clearly, um, so goes the federal government. So goes our regional investments in transit. You can see it when federal agencies are choosing to 
uh, downsize, make more efficient space and, you know, looking within jurisdictions and then opening it up to competition, how much, um, you know, it matters whether or not the federal government has a presence in a particular area. Those are not bad things. However, if that's if that becomes the the determining factor to your long term success, you really run the risk should there be. Uh, a major shift in how the federal government does business that your community could wither on the vine. So this diversification needs to intensify. Um, to we, paraphrase what you're saying, because of this current administration, maybe wanting to shrink the government, that's right. that that's what we're wor- worried about. Well, so I'm worried about that, but I just want to make sure that I level set with you. I'm really talking right now about technology when I talk about this issue. With respect to diversification of the income, you know, Nestle coming here, Gerber coming here. Uh, yeah, for those who don't know, Nestle came and brought how many jobs? 700? 700 jobs. Yeah, yeah Gerber, a, a lot less. But you're starting to see, you know, right. Nestle came, Gerber came, the, the Food Association came. Other people are yeah. beginning to say, okay, this is a place for us. Yeah, so I, I want to make sure that, that we're clear about something, which is the diversity of this local economy is not visible to a lot of people. And a lot of the work that I did last year, the 2030 group, when I looked at the region's economy, showed me a couple of things that were really salient. The first one is there have been over $100 billion plus business sales over the last 20 years in this region. And we've created companies like Capital One and, and Sprint and Nextel and on and on, you know, MetaMune. This is a region that can create really large companies. The problem, Lauren, is that we're at a point in our society's industrial development where most of the big things that are going to happen are going to be around software in some way artificial intelligence, virtual reality, personalized medicine, and so forth. And so we really are at the cusp of, I think, an equivalent industrial change to what happened with steam and coal power in the really? 1800s. Absolutely. And, you know, Mark and Dries a number of years ago said software is going to eat the world, but he was being a bit flippant, but it's, it's a fact of life. And so literally, if you don't have a society of people that are in, in educated in K through 12, you know, literally – if we don't teach people how to code the same way we're teaching people to read uh, and and write and do math, we're going to be in a real difficult situation. That's what I mean. I mean literally, the world's changing around us. I, I see that when I talk with policymakers. The government issue is the government is likely going to shrink because, let's be clear, these, these tax cuts are creating a permanent structural deficit. And I'm not hearing the Democrats, and I'm a lifelong Democrat, but I'm not hearing the Democrats saying, you know what, we're going to raise taxes. You know, Democrats talk about taking the tax sure. and, and spending, you know, spending money on something else. So we're going to have a chronic budget shortfall. And I'm an economist. I used to be an international arbitrage trader. The markets will discipline us eventually. So I think the government will shrink. And uh, and I do think that if we're not if we're not at the cusp of technology, if we're not because we are pretty much we're skating on the edge right now, you know, but if we fall off, edge the of. curve, we're skating on the edge of falling behind, you know, Silicon as a country. Well, as a country. Yeah, we have some. We're burning our furniture to keep warm in a lot of ways with federal R and D. But as an as a nation, you know, the Pentagon, Department of Homeland Security, NSA, all these agencies that acquire and use technology, most of them are now out in Silicon Valley looking for technology, and that wasn't the case. You know, I sat in meetings with DARPA, you know, which is based, based here, here in Arlington. Mm-hmm. Uh, DARPA personnel meeting with venture capitalists before the Pentagon opened the office out there as a consultant. I'm sitting in meetings, and people are saying, "If you guys want technology, you have to be in the valley." And they bought the argument to the detriment yeah. of this region. So that's what I'm getting at, Lauren. It's just, how does this relate to Amazon? Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody wants to start a business. Not, many, not everybody wants to do what you, you and I have done in our lives, you know, starting a technology business. But a lot of people want to work in tech. And we need to have, in my opinion, a large technology-driven company so that people who want to experience work in a tech company will stay here. Because once they're here, then they'll understand that Cap One's a tech company. They'll understand, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll understand that Nestle is going to be a tech company and, and they'll, because every company is a tech company these days. And I think that's so true. Once we're able to get people to actually take a close look at this and go beyond what may be the branding of this region as a government town or Arlington, Virginia, just simply as a bedroom community of Washington, D.C., people are positively amazed. And, and we're seeing they're making investments and commitments to being here long term. And again, I'm not just talking about Nestle, but just a couple of days ago, we hosted in Arlington uh, a 
uh, conference, Blockchain, Cryptocurrency, and Beyond, BCBCon. Yeah, yeah. It was there. And you were there. I was there. Oh, it was a great conference. So, you know, you're talking about something that probably 10 years ago would have been unheard of, not only in this region, but certainly uh, in Arlington, where you've got people on the cutting edge of, you know, uh, blockchain technology which is going to have application applications beyond bitcoin you know we're talking about all areas of med tech um uh education uh we're, we're talking so many uh, limitless in terms of its applications and we're bringing people here um and, and who knows how many will choose to set up shop here pursue their entrepreneurial endeavors here but they've gotten exposure and their eyes have been open that wow this is a lot more than I thought it was. And that's been positive. So I want to, well, you can take a very quick break, but to kind of the other side of the bookend of this conversation is that you're both saying and making very compelling arguments that this region is, has risks. And these risks are real and they're not getting any better and that we should really be considering what we're going to do to mitigate them. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and, and we'll, we'll get into the discussion further. Hi, I'm Lauren Epstein, and you're listening to The Lauren Epstein Show, where we talk about jobs, careers, and the workplace here on 96.7 FM. If you're interested in being on the show, you can give me a call at 240-876-0276 or email me at Lauren, L-O-R-N-E, at electriccow.com. You can check out our Facebook page, which is Lauren Epstein, and also our Mixcloud account. So if you go to mixcloud.com, Lauren Epstein, you'll find our shows. Thanks so much. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lauren Epstein. You're listening to The Lauren Epstein Show here on 96.7 FM. I'm with my guest, Christian Dorsey, who's county board member at Arlington County, and Jonathan Aberman. Uh, we're talking about the economy of Arlington and kind of what may happen and, and how Amazon kind of fits into the big picture. I, I wanted to just say, I think you both made excellent arguments about what's actually going on. The very dispassionate of just the facts are we are kind of a one business town. Well, what I would say, Lauren, is that we run the risk of becoming a one business town in technology. We're not a one business town. Real estate here, hotels, consumer products. Uh, so let's be clear. This economy is much more diversified than people think. All I'm saying is that when it comes to high technology software, next generation technologies, we have a community where I would say 80 to 90 percent of the activity in things like cybersecurity, for example, are directly related to the federal yeah, government. Right. But yet we have the dominant cybersecurity cluster in the United States, maybe second only in Silicon Valley. So all I'm saying to you is that government – has driven technology here. You know, the internet was invented here. Al Gore didn't do it, but DARPA did. Right, GPS right. was invented here. Right, we Siri. had May East in a parking lot. Mm. Let me. T I mean, the, Christian's point yeah. about Bitcoin. You know, just to point that out, that's a great example of software runs the is, could eat the world. Right. An open source, open data protocol literally could change entire industries. And it was also, I thought, really cool that it was at Marymount's new facility. Yeah, exactly. You know, another example of what makes a community like D.C. or Arlington so tremendous. I mean, you know, you go, we've got Virginia Tech here, Marymount, GW, you got, you know, all these really smart people, a DARPA. So it's, let's, it's terrific. Let's talk about how, if Amazon came, how would that better and, and maybe drive towards what it is that you're thinking we should go to? You want to go first, Christian? Yeah, I, I would say, look, I don't know exactly, you know, the full extent of, of Amazon's business. I haven't studied it that closely, but it's it's more than just simply an online retailer. And, you know, you're talking about up and down its supply chain and also the R&D that goes in some of the technological innovations. They are, you know, in so many lines of business that utilize uh, very technological competencies. We're talking about a huge ecosystem that they would help create in our area. And, um, you know, when it comes to the, the possibilities, if, if that company continues to expand and grow as it has, we could even see and exceed uh, the kind of imprint or the footprint that they've had in Seattle over time. That's that's conceivable. Who knows? So we're I'm not making a prediction. The, we're we're going to talk about the footprint they've had in Seattle because I think there's some interesting things that, that – Well, some lessons to, learned. Well, and, and look, quite frankly, uh, a lot of the things that people are, are raising as red flags – I'm absolutely aware of, and I can actually see on the ground, but I think people need to take in mind, given the Seattle experience, we have a lot more knowledge of what we need to remediate in advance, what we need to prevent in the first place in the event 
that Amazon does choose to set set foot here. And, and, and let's be frank, a lot of those concerns have been shared by Amazon itself. If you look at its RFP, uh, you know, sort of uh, wish list that it that it put out there, they were looking for communities that were resilient enough and had governance and policies in place to ward off against some of the unintended consequences of their huge growth out west. And where do people see the RFP if they want to? Oh, it's, you know, I don't know exactly where it, yeah. where it is, but it's certainly public. Right. Yeah. And, they, yeah. and they've talked a lot about that. But, you know, there are a couple of things that are really important. Um, so this is a much broader and larger economy on a relative size basis from Baltimore down to Richmond or even just more immediate than, than Seattle. It's not geographically bound in the same way. So you're starting out with 50,000 jobs here, even if they are highly demanding jobs and the people that will – you know, do the jobs. It's important to understand a couple things. First of all, we don't talk about a lot, but there's surplus employment potential here, even though the unemployment rate is very low. I will tell you from my experience teaching MBAs at the Smith School and seeing the people that go in the government contract industry, a lot of 30-year-olds, a lot of 25-year-olds, a lot of 40-year-olds would love to work at a high-tech product company. So I think that these 50,000 people aren't going to come from the outside. Some will, but I think a lot are going to actually come from current jobs. And so the region will not necessarily suffer the same way. But having said that, I think Christian and I have talked about this, you know, with, with Kojo Sub, who I can't remember his yeah, name. Remember he was great. Was, but... We carried that guy. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, and we've been in different venues uh, talking about this. And, you know, the, the reality is that there, there's going to be displacement because anytime any community that suddenly has a gap up in high paid jobs – because you live in a capitalist system, people then want to move to where they want to move and they want to live, and you get yuppification. And uh, one of the big challenges that we have to figure out, this is always a problem when you have a capitalist society, is people start to bid up assets because they want them. How do you manage to deal with the people that aren't in the same position? And that's, that's really hard. My fondest hope is that because of the geographic diversity of this region and because Arlington you know, as in particular, I think Montgomery County also thinks about how urban planning, how planning, how education, how it all fits together. I think that there's – I feel a lot better about the possible displacement here yeah. than I would in a place like Atlanta. I think that's right. You know, because we have an infrastructure here. Well, when you say here, so we're talking – I know they're talking about in lots of places within 20 miles yeah. of us. But it, where do you think they mean and, and where would you – where do you perceive that they're looking, really looking – I mean, I'll be frank, and it's not because I'm an Arlington County board member, but when I read their RFP uh, when it came out, I will say it spoke to me. Um, the location, Arlington, Alexandria, that we conceive of in the Crystal City, Potomac Yard area, seemed, uh, among places that I'm familiar with, seemed to, to, to fit fit the bill, not only in terms of what their needs are, but really where you could accommodate something of that magnitude without those issues of displacement mm -hmm. um, being the primary driver. Uh, you know, certainly the, you, you've got physical space, perhaps out in Fairfax, Loudoun County. Uh, but when you combine that with the desire to uh, leverage already built and already invested in uh, investments in transit and other municipal infrastructure, this area seems to kind of have it. And connectivity, not just to within the region, but also being able to access uh, two major airports within a 25-minute uh, transit, now transit ride. I mean, that's that's a pretty amazing thing. But that said, if it comes anywhere in this region, I think communities like Arlington will be very well poised to uh, to, to leverage that presence in, in ways that produce benefits for the people who live there. And, and for folks, just on the Crystal City component, because yeah. I, I, it's not far from here, but right. Crystal City was built in the 80s to support the <laughs> Earlier. government. government contract. Earlier, yeah. Eight, before, Six, in the 70s? 1860s. 60s. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, I know that they, they've... The U.S. Been, Patent Office was a... Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. So the Patent Office was there, and a lot of the people in the Pentagon would work there, and it was primarily government folks. And if you worked there, you saw a lot of people in uniform. And then the government pulled out right. and the buildings emptied out. And we had like a 20 plus percent vacancy rate. Yeah, and 20 percent overall in Arlington, but about tw uh, 20, 20, I think 7 percent in Crystal City. Yeah. And then over the last 20 years, Potomac Yards, which is just a little bit south of that, right. got built out. That's so right. it was completely unused space. And then they put a big open mall mm -hmm. and then they put apartments. And there's still a, like acres of space there. Oh, tons of acres of space still left over, left for redevelopment. And then you've got the big box retailer site that's there that has been planned by the city of Alexandria right. for 
smarter growth development. We've made some transit investments. There's going to be a new uh, Potomac Yard metro station uh, coming in along there. So, and and this is all within literally earshot of the airport. Absolutely, oh, yeah. Walking, di- walking distance right. of the airport. You can actually create a pedestrian bridge that could connect Crystal City to National Airport um, yeah. in a way where you can walk there in less than 10 minutes. Which I never knew why they didn't, because I would <laughs> like I have to take a cab from the hotel in Crystal City to get to the airport exactly. in Crystal City. Because even though the distance is short, there is no yeah. uh, walkable infrastructure to get you there. And so when you're thinking of places, Jonathan, <laughs> oh, God. where are you thinking? Where am I thinking? Yeah, physically, I, I where are you thinking? I want to be in Hawaii right now. That's no, like, let's oh, go. Oh, okay. Uh, I couple things. First of all, I think that Amazon is going to locate here. I, I absolutely do. I think that on the merits, the combination of the overall size of the economy, the underemployment of the technology workforce that exists, and for a lot of – they're really smart people, and I think the arguments have been made to them based upon what I've heard. I think they're coming here. Personally, I think that uh, the Fairfax location, you know, Fairfax Loud and Montgomery County both offer – interesting greenfield opportunities if they want to do more of a suburban campus. Mm -hmm. And if they want to do an urban campus, there is a lot to be said for Crystal City. And I think that the proximity of D.C. and the urban life, it makes it very compelling. You know, I've been told by people who have met with them, that have have worked with them, meaning the Amazon people, they are really by the numbers, data-driven people. Somebody actually described them as Vulcans. (laughs) Seriously, I just, you know, I understand this isn't about emotion. And and so I think that um, only they know what the criteria are. But the one thing I have heard from a number of economists who have been involved with these various bids is that wherever it goes, whether it goes in Crystal City, where it goes in Montgomery County, or it goes in Fairfax, Loudoun, it's going to benefit the region overall because people, you know, are going to live in other places. They're going to choose. Absolutely. And, and so there's no doubt the, the community that has the ground zero will get more benefit. But I think that it's it is one of these things where again because it's geographically diverse and people are diverse, I think there's going to be a lot of op- opportunity. But I do want to stress, I think on the merits we're going to get this. I really do. So let's talk a little bit about the unintended. And, and I want to just one last thing on that we're going to get it. Uh, Arlington Now, which is an Arlington website, had an article that was um, oh, searched hit right by six thousand yeah. from from an Amazon internal website. Yeah. So the folks at Amazon looked at some very local blog. Well, a, a, an enormous amount of times, yeah. more times than they should ever get a, a, a hit from anything. The well, Russians download my podcast too, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it could be conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's so one of those like, things, though, Lauren. If Amazon does come here, you know that'll that'll, that'll be that's why that'll be like, yeah. See, we had a <laughs> exactly. hit. We had a clue. Exactly. <laughs> so okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to talk about some of the unintended consequences. So I was talking about this with my wife and my mother-in-law, and uh, they had very strong opinions about. One, if Amazon comes, it's going to increase the price of housing dramatically, which is going to make it harder for folks to come here who are in the lower income. Um, they're also possibly could, you know, take over the government. <laughs> I mean that they would have a huge footprint, bigger than any organization. When you said Nestle, 700 people, 80 people, that's nothing, right? But if it's 50,000 folks and Arlington has about 200 and – 20 or 30 or 40,000 people, that's a lot of people and a big presence and a huge part of our tax base. All right. Now, I know we've talked about, you know, well, wait, it's, it's I'm not lo- done. okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because I ahead. think, I mean, I think Locust and, you know, the death of our firstborn could be around the corner that if I am hiring for folks at my company and now I'm competing with Amazon, forget well, about it. Well, that's a different issue. Yeah, you, yeah you, but it's part of it though. Well, because no, they're going to bring this. Issue. They're going to bring a different economy of like uh, I'm competing against other government consulting companies. Right. And I hire a Java developer. They're thinking, okay, I could either work at this company or that company. It's about the same amount of money and it's about the same job. I was interviewed at a company called Zones, which is south of Seattle, which is a high tech company, and they could not get people from Seattle, thirty minutes away, to come there. You know, because of the salaries, they would not compete. On the salaries, that I think is another problem. If you want to do a startup, like, hey, let's do something, and you're competing against Amazon, well, uh, so let's separate. Shoulder. So let's you can start. You can no, start let's separate the issues. Issues. Let's separate yeah. issues because, first of all, the issue of housing affordability is not an issue of competing for high-priced talent. That is an issue for the people that aren't in a position to get a high-paying job, and they're the ones that are going to be harmed if the housing prices gap up. The only thing I can say in that regard is it's really up to 
it's up to Arlington and it's up to Fairfax, it's up to Montgomery County to make sure that they're working to create affordable housing. They need to be working on the permanent and, and all these issues and working with, to get subsidies to create But housing. it's also folks who get older and need to stay. I know the county has well, done yeah. some stuff. But, but, <clears throat> but, the, but yeah, the municipal government will be able to handle if we do it well. Again, this is not, you know, this is not a, you know, you just uh, issue one ordinance and you're done. It's, it's a combination of a couple things. It's investments in uh, the construction, bricks and mortar construction of affordable housing. It's also utilizing your zoning code to make, um, you know, housing, to not artificially restrict the supply of housing in a community so that you um, have a presence of, of a new company hiring lots of talent. And then um, also you're artificially suppressing your supply. So it's up to jurisdictions to work that dynamic out. But just let's keep in mind, even as they project, Amazon is not talking about 50,000 people tomorrow. No. They're talking about a phased approach over time, which we shouldn't underestimate how much of an opportunity that is for a jurisdiction I got it. to handle but, no, this. Totally. My Lord, it's, I'm it's, saying, what are the unintended consequences? What's going to happen when they come? Well, it's going to change the region because it's going to, unless people engage in enlightened governance, if they throw up their hands and say, ah, free market. You know, that, that nice little cop-out people make when, you know, their ideologies support them being selfish or <laughs> when they just don't want to think hard. The worst thing that happened in this region would be Amazon turns up and wherever they turn up, the local politicians, whoever they are, say, oh, we'll let the free market decide. Right. And, and But if you, if you actually take the position that a free market economy is actually a blended economy and you have to do – you have to create incentives for people to make money, but you also have to create incentives for people to live and older people and, and so forth – then the good news about a location of a business like an Amazon is it increases your tax base. I mean, let's face it, for Arlington, if, if for Fairfax as well, and Montgomery, also Montgomery County's job growth right now, I mean, they just, just, just came out with a study over the last 10 years. They've had zero, just about zero yeah. company growth. Wherever it goes, there's surplus capacity. There's a place to put Amazon. There's Absolutely. a place to put the people. Uh, and there's an opportunity to take advantage of the increased tax base with enlightened government to take care of these unintended consequences. I'm much happier about it happening here than a, in a community that makes pretend the devil takes the hindmost is the best way to grow an economy. No, I think that's right. And, you know, I would say you look at a lot of, a lot of indicators, you know, if Amazon uh, builds as they project where they're talking about, I think it's half a million square feet to start and then, um, you know, growth and, and changes in the business dictating the course of future build out. You know, that's something that can easily, and I mean easily, that's an intentional adverb, be absorbed within Arlington County without ancillary negative consequences mm -hmm. um, on housing and other things. We've certainly got that capacity within our, our office stock. So, if so they I, want, were to, I, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. But in having an honest conversation about what could go wrong in Seattle, they don't have a, 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 a income tax. So... It's very hard for people to send their kids to public school. Mm -hmm. Most of the folks send their kid to private school, mm -hmm. and and it's because there's not enough tax base. If if there was, if if the folks at Amazon were paying a fair share, well, you that's know, what right. I mean. About, but that's what I mean about the size of a community. That you know, look, I believe in democracy. I, I'm I'm sorry, I just do. And you know, before we went on the air, you were talking about the three of us are talking about how. This program is supported by Arlington County making investments to support this radio station. That's a political decision. And it's a decision because the majority of citizens in this community want that to happen. You know, Seattle, they, they wring their hands. They did it to themselves. You know, it's not, a, it's not a police state. It's not a banana republic. It's a democracy. People voted for their local politicians. And clearly, the majority of the people or the majority of engaged people in that community are willing to put up with it because of it happened. Amazon's coming into a community that has 7 million or 8 million people between Baltimore and Richmond. There are millions of people here. This is the highly educated, this is the social advocacy capital of the planet, I think. And Arlington is, you know, very active community. To my mind, the idea of a company coming in here and the unintended consequences, the biggest challenge is going to be balancing it. I expect mm -hmm. this community is going to be very, very vocal about overcrowded schools and, and all the rest of it. Yeah, we already have schools that are overcrowded. Right. We don't Absolutely. have enough room. But and if we, there's we, more we, wealth, we, there's more possibility to solve problems is all I'm saying. I, you, know, you know, listen, uh, you know, look, uh, you, you can. I hear you. I totally am with you, Jonathan. And I got to say, I wish I could I remember be like, a venture capitalist. You know, I, I mean, I have to believe that wealth right, is better. Right. And I believe that human beings have, we have a vote, right? We're American citizens. We have a vote. We have a say. We can have a sense over our, uh, uh, some agency over our democracy. And I'm really clear about the democracy that I got. 
is not exactly the democracy that I want. That's true, but you know, keep keep in mind, and and this is where I'm going to speak specifically about the fears that people have that you know I can at least give a little different perspective on. P- part of everyone's negative um, negative outcomes coming to fruition are, are going to happen when communities decide that they want to um, forego the revenue that would accrue to a community from business investment. They want to return that to the company so that they can grow wealth and profit among its shareholders at the expense of having the ability to further invest in the community, providing schools and other infrastructure and other good things. That clearly is not something that Arlington would do Mm -hmm. uh, because there is no... No, Arlington wouldn't do it. But as Jonathan and I were talking about, a lot of these companies in Silicon Valley are basically becoming... You know, externalities. They're, they're taking sure. everything they're doing is putting it off and, and getting it off their books so they make more money. Well, they were at a different stage when Silicon Valley grew up among them. Uh, Seattle was at a different stage when Amazon grew up around it. We are relative mature communities in terms of how we govern and how we grow. So you think we're going to be smart enough? We're going like, to... Hell, hell yeah. I do. Actually, hell yeah. I, can I, they say... Hey, Apatay, can oh, they say hell I'm on the sorry. radio? No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we? Is that a word that we can say? Yeah. He just okay. said hello, yeah. Okay. That's what I heard. Thank you, Jonathan. No problem. And no, I it's apologize. totally cool. I'm just like light, lightening up the conversation. Uh, you're doing a great job. Yeah. So, no, I'll tell you what. I right, mean, so, this so, has gone much better than when he and I were on Code Show. I just want you to my, I can tell you, my mother-in-law <laughs> is going to listen to this. My wife's going to listen to this, and she, they're going to get pissed off at me if I don't ask you, tell me what you think the unintended consequences are of Amazon coming to Arlington. We'll just say the area, but, you know. What 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 are the what are the bad things we got to watch out for? Because after this, I want to talk about how do we get ready. Sure, you know it de- it does depend on on where they come. You know, again, if they take advantage, they want to do a suburban campus on Greenfields and Fairfax Loudon. The consequences on a community like Arlington, I think, are fairly nil. We we achieve or we we realize a lot of benefit without having to uh, you know deal with any of the various incentives that'll be a part of what Amazon. Uh, coming brings. So those will be huge net benefits. If they come here, it will really depend a lot on how they choose to grow. If they look to effectively, um, you know, take our existing building office stock and say, you know what, we don't want that. We want to we want something new, um, then it provides commensurately less benefit for us because you know we're not actually reducing vacancy overall. We're not taking advantage of existing plan neighborhoods and building. It's less of a, a net benefit. If, uh, if they decide that uh, for whatever reason they are going to want to insist on communities that give up uh, a huge amount of future returns on, on tax revenue, well, that's not going to be a consequence because we're not going to let that happen. <laughs> so you're saying that is a non-starter if they came to us and said, "Tax, give me some tax deals." Uh, it's, it's right. Some, but you know that that's a matter of negotiation because you know there's 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 there are things that they would be entitled to regardless of whether they were Amazon or some other company. We do have right. tech incentives that allow people to come, so they're okay. going to get that. And so does the state. Exactly. Yeah. But the larger point is, you know, it, it makes no sense from what they. What they put in their RFP is for what they want from a community that they would actually want to extract the ability for a community to invest in what has made the community great. I agree with that. So that is going to be our baseline. We are not going to give up the ability to continue to invest in what has made Arlington great. Period. Yeah, I think they're going to. I think that they're they're going to get a great deal coming in. You know, we've already seen Maryland go and legislate $5 billion in benefits if Amazon locates in Montgomery County. So coming in, Amazon's going to get a tremendous benefit uh, to locate. I agree that ultimately, once you're part of a community, and I see this with Capital One, I see this with um, many companies, the bigger companies, you you start to see yourself as part of the community. I, I believe that they will see themselves part of the community. I agree with Christian. I think they're coming, if they come here, it's because they want to be part of the community. So I'm very... I am optimistic. Well, look, part of it is I know a lot of people that are in Arlington government. I think they're thoughtful people. And I could imagine me sitting in their position, or Lauren, I could imagine you sitting in their position. The people that do these jobs are not thoughtless people. You know, Arlington consistently has brought people in who are thoughtful. They're not all Democrat, they're not all Republican, but they're thoughtful. This is going to be an existential challenge for community. Mm-hmm. I think they're up to it. I can say the same thing about the people in Fairfax mm-hmm. County, Loudoun. I feel very good about the folks in uh, Montgomery County and uh, the people over there. But you asked me about unintended consequences. I think the biggest unintended consequence that 
is going to sound like a high class problem and you'll probably reach over and smack me. <laughs> but I think that every technology company, every startup, every medium sized startup here is going to feel like, what am I chopped liver? I already, I've already seen it. You know, uh, Don Berger, who's a very vocal member of the DC tech community, a number of weeks ago did an open letter to the DC government and said, hey, if you're going to give Amazon a bunch of money to come here, why don't you take that money and give it to us instead? There are a lot more of us than there are of Amazon. We'll create more jobs. And you alluded to earlier when you were talking about the competition for talent. I think that if, and this is, I think, frankly, this is a business community issue, uh, and this is a probably a state government issue more than an Arlington County issue. But And I've talked with the governor about this, by the way. Uh, if we get Amazon, we have to be ready to come up with incentives and devices and things to really encourage startup formation, startup growth, other than Amazon, because the wages are going to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. the, the war for town is going to be enormous, and people are going to say, wait a minute, you just spent all that money to bring him, them here? What about finding capital for me? What about help me train my people? What about help me expand my business? And believe it or not, if we don't do that, we win the battle and lose the war. If you remember back a half hour or so ago, I told you we're at the crossroads of not being a digital leader. If all we get is Amazon and we don't keep everybody else engaged, we lose. Right. If we keep everybody else engaged, suddenly we rival Tel Aviv and Silicon Valley and other places around the world as a, a tech product community, which is really where we want to be in five or ten years. So that's the biggest unintended consequence I worry about. So in Arlington County, there's a, a Lee Highway Planning Committee and mm -hmm. there's other planning committees. But this planning committee has been going on for years and there's a lot of charrettes that go on where community members come in and say, this is what we want it to look like and this is how we want to engage. And I want to start talking about how do we get ready. Is the county considering doing that kind of thing to prepare for our, for Amazon, you know, absolutely. Once once the details, if if it should come to pass. Oh, and and, and I, I'm going to answer, but I also don't want to forget to ask you: Are we going to give them like the kind of money that other places are offering? Like some places are bending over backwards and saying, "Here, don't, don't have my that. first." I, I want to be very clear. I have no idea what the Commonwealth of Virginia wants to do or will do. That will by by far be you know when you talk about quantifiable incentives, they're going to come from the state. They're not right. going to come from I mean, the locality. Okay, so we're not really going to be – the local government doesn't have the kind of resources. Oh, heavens. Have. Heavens no. Heavens no. no See, like I, when went, Nestle I went came from hell to heavens. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the Nestle deal, for example. I mean, a lot of that came out of the governor's opportunity. Absolutely. Fund state. A lot Absolutely. Of those, but didn't we fly all those folks in? Oh, I don't think they we, they flew in on our dime. I, you know, I don't I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so. All right. Um, so you know, yeah. So the state is a totally different entity. That's where the real yeah, no, incentive money yeah. will come from. And in Arlington, but I think it's important for Arlingtonians to know that absolutely like, that the money is not going to come from the Arlington County government. Absolutely. And by the way, any any money appropriations, whether they be um, new incentives that don't already exist or um, you know, investments in infrastructure, which are a typical bread and butter incentive that we offer people to come here. None of those can be approved without a public hearing. So that's something that we have a public conversation about after it may be negotiated or, or posited. So th there is nothing that's going to happen that we're going to commit ourselves to that our public is not going to be able to send us a clear signal that they're interested in. And if I could just, you know, quickly, another unintended consequence to me that is much more real is Amazon has has become such a huge, incredible player in the world. You do run the risk of if they come to a community like Arlington, Alexandria, this this being a place where they they predominate the conversation. And I could see a level of speculation, particularly among office owners trying to all attract the businesses that are going to want to be close to Amazon and, and making it very unaffordable. We we're talking about un, uh, unaffordable housing before. Talk about unaffordable office space for the associations and the nonprofits and the others who have long made Arlington a cool place to work. It's going to be a challenge, Lauren. Yeah, it's no, I think that that's, I'm really glad we're having the conversation because I get, I get all your positivity and I want you to know, besides, I think you're a great politician. I think both of you guys have good heads on your shoulders and you're talking about this from a perspective that's look, we can do this. It's not going to be easy, right? but we can do this. We can make it work. And that's a great summation. Yeah, that really is. It, and it, I'm done. That's it. Well, that's but, all but, we, but here's the thing. We can do it, but we should do it. And I, and I think that's a very... Important. Oh, well, let's talk about getting ready and then, and then the yes or no. So what do we need to do to get, like, you know, there's the... I know there's like five people in Arlington listening to the show right now. What well, can they 5, do? 5,000, right? I don't know. Easily. <laughs> what are they doing? What can they do to, to prepare themselves? 
You know, this is going to sound incredibly wonky, but I think it would be really important for people who have just thought about this from perhaps a newspaper article or two to actually read that RFP that they sent out that they asked communities to respond to. So we're going to put the RFP in in the show link. Good, good. So that people can, when they go see the show, or listen to the show rather, that they'll be able to read it. Right. Because I think part of this conversation, you know, people think that it's Amazon saying, who's going to give us the most money? To come. Who want who wants yeah, us badly? That's enough. what people think. And you know, however, what we have is a, a fairly detailed document that looks that that really describes the kind of community that they would like to be in. And at the core, it, it is a community that is progressive, not necessarily politically, but that has uh, made sure that they value and prioritize education, uh, culture, diversity, have made the necessary investments in transit made the necessary investments in sustainability um, is a place where I think Amazon feels like it wants to be a part of to sort of build the brand for their um, not only build their brand, but also to be a, a receptive place for their employees. There, there are a lot of things that that are very simpatico with what we've done. And I think that would give people at least a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of pause from thinking that this is an effort from you know these these Vulcans to just pray <laughs> pray on a community and oh, raid their tax their base. Mind on you. We'll take a quick break. <laughs> My name is Lauren Epstein. You're listening to the Lauren Epstein Show here on ninety six point seven FM, Arlington, Virginia. Um, we'll be back in just a second. Hi, I'm Lauren Epstein. Every week, I talk about jobs and careers on ninety six point seven FM, Arlington, Virginia, at ten a.m. Mondays. Welcome back to the show. My name is Lauren Epstein. I'm the host of the Lauren Epstein Show. You're listening to Christian Dorsey and Jonathan Aberman talk about whether or not Amazon is coming to Arlington and what would happen if they do, uh, besides the end of the world. But it seems like that may not I, happen. I would. I didn't hear that in the last forty minutes. No, I've been, I'm, I'm, I. You know, I, I. I gotta. I'm sorry, man. The only reason I'm taking because I have to live with my wife. And my mother-in-law has a very strong, and, and that's why I'm coming from this place, because I want to kick the tires on this so hard that mm-hmm. I feel like, okay, we really are. Because there's some things in Arlington County we do well, and there's some things in Arlington County we don't do so well. Yeah, sure. we've talked about them before, yeah. sure. And so I, I don't want this to be the one like, ah, oh, we should have done that, or we should have done this. Well, you know. Or we came about it smart. Like, oh, hey, look, we looked at all the consequences. This is what we need to do. We need to have a tax policy that says money that comes in has got to go to small but, startups but you so know that what? startups don't feel like they're being priced There out. are many examples around the United States of, com- of, of communities that – Like where? Oh, Nashville. Okay. And I, I think Nashville has done an amazing job of taking advantage of the growth of, hel- of the healthcare industry there, mm-hmm, HCA, mm-hmm. of uh, taking advantage of that, creating supportive structures to support entrepreneurship – and and helping through different initiatives, neighborhoods grow. You know, I've got family member owns a property in Nashville. There are a lot of diverse neighborhoods there, and so even though you have a core industry that's growing like crazy, there's still plenty of places for people to live, and there's diversity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's one example. Denver is a business community is another one. I think is done a very good job of of being enlightened about how they go about things. So their templates are there. The, look, the key is that you know we live in a world right now where. Frankly, we are overwhelmed on a daily basis with so much freaking change, negativity, and static. We're all rubbed so raw that I think that when we look at something that's going to create a major systemic change in our surroundings, a lot of us don't have any energy left to think about it as anything else. Another, oh, God, you know, do I have to deal with that right now? You know what I mean? And so I feel this is Amazon thing in some ways. It's like, Literally, I'm fighting so hard just to stay in the game, man. Yeah. You know, I'm fighting so hard just to stay, stay current. And now you tell me that that I'm going to have to worry about my kid might not get into the high school that they want him to get into, or I might have to worry about some knucklehead in a BMW cutting me off. You know, it just you go to that negative dark place because people are exhausted. And I think it's a job of of people. Frankly, I think it's a job of people like me and Christian and and you and and others in town to take a step back and to say, you know what. It, it is a scary – change is scary. Something like this is really scary and we can either run from it or we can say, you know what? It's going to be tough but we got we to gotta do something about it. And I think we're both in the camp that overall it's Absolutely. a manageable thing. And where are we now in their decision process? I know they came down to the final 20. Jonathan, you probably know better than I do. You know, it's <laughs> – what I know is I don't know. Uh, th- they are in the process of, of cranking things away. And, and my understanding from uh, – you know, there's a lot of confidential stuff being 
um, exchange. But my understanding is that this region is sincere, is sincerely in, in interesting to them. And the other thing that I find really important is that even though every jurisdiction we're here in Arlington right now, so we're talking about Arlington, but even though every jurisdiction, every state, and the city of D.C. have fought very hard for their own personal, you know, direct interest to locate it. I don't think I've ever seen more collective behavior around the commonality of how the messaging was handled. So, for example, yeah. every jurisdiction sent in a large document that described the benefits of the overall region that was drafted by a shared team. Yeah, Council it, of Governments, yeah, which I sit yeah. on, took the lead on right. coming up with, look, you all don't know, you, you all may think you know our region, but mm -hmm. you don't. Yeah. And here's why you need to come to our region. And by the way, here are particular places within multiple jurisdictions that, that fit the bill, but you need you need to be in the region. I didn't know that. So oh, yeah. that our proposal was really not a competitive proposal. No, it was. It was. What well, happened was, what I loved about it was the politicians and the local politicians and the economic development people said, look, let's be fair to each other. We're going to compete like crazy. We're going to compete. Let's acknowledge we're going to compete, but, you know, let's get together and commonly describe the benefits of the region. Yeah. And, and I thought that was... To my opinion, that was the smartest thing I've seen in the 20 years I've lived here from the standpoint of economic development and polit politicians. It was honest. It was truthful. And it's the way the world's supposed to work. And, you know, people compete to win. That's great. Um, the only thing I see that's close to that has been the, the Metro Now Coalition around Metro. Mm. And uh, maybe that's – I wrote about both of them on my, my business journal column last week. I think these – the collaboration aspects that we are now letting our politicians and our econo economic development officials compete – and stop telling them that they should always cooperate because it's nonsensical was the best thing we ever did. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we're learning a lot. Look, I think we're gonna, we're going to get Amazon, but if we don't, we'll get Apple, <laughs> you know, or we'll get we'll get another big or Arlington's efforts overseas or Fairfax's efforts overseas, sell the region. We'll get more foreign companies coming here. I mean, DC is a good place to be. We've learned a lot through this process, and we plan for it. We plan for it. And you know, look, I, I'm I'm under no illusions. If um, you know, if, if some if, if Amazon uh, were to come, and I agree with Jonathan, if it's not Amazon, we're going to be having this conversation with, with another major mm -hmm. company with growth plans. Um, you know, we're going to need to do some things differently in terms of what we're enabled to do by our, our state, by our commonwealth. I can very much see our needing the community to push for the ability to do some inclusionary zoning mm -hmm. because it's a great way to, uh, to make sure that if you see um, – if you see some acceleration in gentrification of neighborhoods, that you were able to make sure you're clawing some of that back to maintain communities' diversity and affordability. Uh, without that ability, you have one yeah. less arrow in your quiver. They, so I think your, your arguments are making, I mean, they definitely make sense. We do have a highly educated, highly engaged electorate in Arlington County. And I'm going to say everyone in Arlington County should read the RFP. Yeah, definitely. But also start understanding how we kind of make can affect this. Yeah. I mean, I know that the decision is sometime before the end of 19. Mm -hmm. So maybe a year or who knows when, but it's coming soon. And now would be a good time for us to all get ready, understand the issues and start thinking about what did they do in Tennessee and what did they do in other places that made the absorption of a large employer like this work and, and start fomenting, uh, coming up with policies and, and things that would Listen, work for us. I, I would actually make a, a bigger request of our community, oh. which is, well, I... Please do. Well, here's the thing. The issues of smart growth, the issues of economic inclusiveness and, and diversity, those are not issues that we should just be talking about with respect to Amazon, you know? And here's a great example. We have, we have well, like about, uh, about 30 seconds, but what we'll do is we'll stop and we'll go for another minute or so. So, so if anyone's listening to the show right now, we're ending the radio version. So thanks for listening on 96.7 FM, Arlington, Virginia. If you want to hear the rest of these pearls of wisdom, come to the website, laurenepsteinshow.com, and you'll hear the rest of it. But go ahead. So I think that right now the biggest life lesson opportunity we have is people are exercised about Amazon coming, good or bad, right? But they're politically engaged. And they're saying, I want my community to actually reflect what I want my community to be. And I think that we have a moment right now where people who are interested in, in changing this community or making sure it reacts, it reacts a certain way, you understand something really important. If you go in there and you just say, I don't like change, you know, I don't want this, this is terrible. The people who want change, the people who are going to make money off change will turn you off. They'll marginalize you. You can't be a NIMBY. You know, NIMBYs are easy to ignore. But if you come in and you say, look at 
I want, I understand that this will create wealth opportunities. This will create new jobs. I get that. But you need to understand that you're only well off because I'm here too. You know, you're only able to succeed because I'm here too. So what's in it for me? And there needs to be an answer to that. And to my mind, we don't have enough of that conversation nationally right now. We have a lot of, if you don't agree with me, I don't have to listen to you. And there's not enough of, I'm down with what you want to believe, but what's in it for me? And and I look at Arlington, I've seen, you know, I've seen Arlington, and I, and I look at how it deals with issues, and it, it has a unique vibe, you know? It just, Arlington just has a unique vibe, and uh, it's diverse, it's got a lot of different people pursuing different dreams, and when I look at it, I think it could be a really interesting test bed for how you build an urban, a post-industrial economy that, that doesn't leave everybody behind, and that's what I really hope everybody takes away. I know I've said Amazon's going to come. I hope they come. I think they should, but they might not. And what I worry about is if they don't, everybody will say, oh, we stink. You know, they didn't come. We, we suck, you know, and everybody loses interest. Everybody gets disengaged and we feel sorry for ourselves. I just really hope that the energy that's going in is what if Amazon comes or not. It, it can be applied by Christian and other people advocating for Arlington to get an Apple or, uh, you know, another multinational like a Nestle to locate and keep slamming it out and doing the thing because – that's how we end up. We're not Detroit, you know, <laughs> without the charm. That's really what I'm getting at. And that's where I see that's the most important thing about Amazon for me is that we're learning how to deal with an economy that's inclusive. I, yeah, don't know. I mean, I, I like your argument of like, this is an opportunity for us to broaden our game yeah, and, and, and make something really amazing out of a, an opportunity, but, something that, you know, the world could look at and say like, hey, this can work and um, be better for people. And, and if it doesn't, we're, we're going to continue doing what we have done to diversify Arlington's economy to make it more resilient and to make it more future focused. Uh, I'm one of those people who, while I'm excited at the possibility, because I think we're well equipped to do it right, if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to lose any sleep uh, because I think that the course that we're pursuing is the right one for Arlington regardless. Um, you know, this this would, in effect, sort of validate what we've done and accelerate it. And that would be, that would be terrific in order to deliver some real benefits for the community. But, but if not, it, it in no way takes us away from continued emphasis on uh, the tech sector being a place where we're going to, we're going to sort of hitch our wagons for future growth and development. And with that, Jonathan, you want to last word? Uh, I think Christian and I brought it so strong. I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to finish the rest of my day. So how can folks reach out to you if they're interested? Well, definitely follow me on Twitter at, at Jay Aberman, and then I have my weekly column in the Washington Business Journal. Awesome. Um, Christian? You can email me. You can tweet at me. You can find me walking down the Twitter street handle? in your neighborhood. Uh, I have several, but uh, A-R-L underscore C Dorsey. A-R-L. off the tongue. Uh, yeah. There you go. Or... One is very easy to remember, caffeinated pro. Did you really? Absolutely. Oh, nice. Man. I like that. I'm, I'm, humbled, I'm humbled by that. <laughs> Guys, it's been a great conversation. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Thank it, you, and I hope you're not going to be in trouble with yeah, your mother-in-law really hope and with you your wife. Eh, it's okay. All right. <laughs> they love me. You've been listening to The Lauren Epstein Show. I'm your host, Lauren Epstein, here on 96.7 FM, Arlington, Virginia. We will see you next week 